And here he is, Seth Rock, on this week's edition of Seth's Inside Scoop here on Coffee with Ram. Joining me on his segment to talk about the busy weekend once again, upcoming here on the network. But uh, Seth, got to ask you, man, uh, after the busy weekend, I know that you were uh, sick for most of it. You ended up uh, coming down to, to Pilot Mound on those uh, two Sunday games we had. How are you feeling now that the weekend's over? you feeling a bit better? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm feeling peachy now. So hopefully this time I'll be able to cover every single game we got here. Now I won't be sick this time. Yeah, for sure. And uh, I unfortunately won't be there for the game that I guess has already passed at the time that we do this segment of uh, Seth's Inside Scoop, of course. Uh, seven games in total this weekend on the network. And starting off uh, today, on Thursday, earlier in the day, uh, the Pilot Mount Hockey Academy U-17 male prep Buffalo is taking on the Brandon Weeking U-17 AAA team at Blackjack Stewart Arena. Uh, Pilot Mount coming into this game after a successful weekend, uh, getting two wins, only suffering one loss on that Friday game against the Notre Dame Hounds. But uh, you got to think this U-17 team for Pilot Mount coming in with a lot of confidence to this exhibition game that's already been played today. Oh, yeah, definitely. They were able to string it together a few wins on the showcase that we had covered. And even the week before that, they were able to get a win. So, you know, they got all the confidence in the world, like you said. So, you know, they're going to come into this game. They know they're going up against a very, very good team in this uh, Brandon Wheat Kings U17 team. But, uh, you know, they're, they have all the confidence in the world. And if, you know, they go in with that confidence and play a good, solid game, they got a good chance to win. Let's uh, dive into the Buffaloes first off, and then we'll dive into Brandon after. But just looking at this U-17 team, a lot of strengths that they showed this past weekend. Uh, and one thing that I feel like is going to be huge again for them in this game is going to be their goaltending. No matter which goaltender they go with, whether it be Miles Gordon, Cameron Perry, or Keen Hodgins, they'll have a lot of confidence. How key will uh, this goaltending that the Buffaloes have be against the Brandon Wheat Kings U-17 AAA team in this exhibition game on Thursday? Oh, yeah, you got to think it's probably one of the number one priority or number one things going into the weekend because uh, we know this team, this Brandon team can score. We know they got some fast players. So the goaltenders, whoever it is, whoever's starting, whether it's uh, Cameron Perrier, Myers Gordon, or Kean Hodgins, they're going to be ready to go and raring to go because they've been very hot recently. And uh, not only has the goaltending looked very good for the Buffaloes as of late, but the, the defensive zone coverage, just the assignment uh, play that they've had, uh, you know, the active sticks, just their coverage in front of the net uh, transitioning out of the zone has looked better and better as the season has went along, especially last weekend. Coming into this game against a Brandon team who's going to look to, you know, generate a lot of offense in the pilot mound zone. How huge is their, uh, you know, improvement of their defensive play going to be and uh, what they'll be looking to continue in that area against Brandon in this exhibition game? Oh, yeah, it's there. The improvement there has been massive, you know. I remember when we first started covering these uh, this team earlier in the year, we had uh, pointed out that that was one of the things they need to work on was their defensive zone coverage. And, you know, it, uh, in the games that we've covered uh, since then, they have definitely improved a lot. So I think it's going to be the number one key thing. Like we talked about, like we just said, a uh, high offensive team. So you're going to have your play. A real, there's going to be a real defensive style, I think, to Pilot Mounds game. And I think they're going to try to continue what they've uh, – what they've worked on over the course of the year and uh, really try to establish it in this next game. And yeah, the uh, the passing, just the, the tape to tape passes for the Buffaloes has looked a lot better. They've looked a lot more confident with the puck as a group as of late, especially. But uh, going into the offensive zone for the Buffaloes, a big thing that we've noticed is that four check has been really good for them. Uh, what do you see in their four check coming up this game against the Brandon Weekings U17 AAA team in this exhibition game being for the Buffaloes this time around? Well, yeah, you know, their forecheck has also been very, very good recently. And uh, we've seen, like, uh, they, they, they're they really hard on the puck now. They're a lot harder than they were. And, uh, you know, a lot more players are going into the physical areas. You know, I remember at the start of the year, I, we were just – it was mostly when we were talking about physical play, we were mentioning a player like Izzy Amy. But now, you know, these past few games, I see we've seen last constant get into it, into it a little bit. You know, Bo Bannerman with his big size, you know, these guys have really been uh, starting to go into the corners and muck it up and uh, really play a physical, you know, and hard on the forecheck. So 
you know, I think they're going to uh, take that with stride and uh, apply, really apply it in this next game. Looking at uh, the special team side of things for this U-17 Buffaloes team, uh, you know, the penalty kill, uh, I said on Graham's opinion in that game against Prairie Hockey Academy, uh, you know, they, they were running around a bit. They were getting sucked into the puck and uh, really leaving some open space for the Prairie Hockey Academy players. But overall, in that weekend, you ought to give Pilot Mountain credit for how they looked on the penalty kill, just keeping pucks to the outside and not really uh, keeping the play to the outside and not really letting uh, teams really get inside on that penalty kill. Against a team like Brandon, of course, in any game, there's going to be those opportunities for teams to get on the power play against them. Uh, how huge is this penalty kill going to be for the Buffaloes in this exhibition game against the Wheat Kings? You know, yeah, I, I believe it's got it's got to be big, and uh, we we see, and you know, like they were they you know they weren't able to get pucks as uh, out as much as they would have wanted to in these games, but you know, like like you said, they were keeping pucks to the outside, so that is a good sign, and you know, they were really limiting shots on goal on their penalty kill, so that's a good thing. But one thing I think they do need to work on is just trying to get the puck more, trying to clear it out, you know have a little bit more awareness uh, and covering your man, you know, you're, you are missing a guy. So it is harder to, harder to get the puck out and, uh, and be able to match those players because you are missing a guy on the penalty kill. But uh, as long as you're aware and you're able to get, use your active sticks and be able to turn pucks over, I think, you know, you got a good opportunity at shutting down their, their hot power play. Now over to the uh, man advantage side of things for the Buffaloes. Uh, what I found, Seth, when we covered them this past weekend was just uh, their ability to move that puck around, you know, waiting for their opportunities to open up and also being patient with the puck, drawing players in. Uh, of course, the, the power play has kind of been a strong suit for the Buffaloes at times this season in terms of the strengths that they've been able to do. What do you expect from this power play when they do get their advantages, whether they're on a five on four or five on three against uh, Brandon coming up in this exhibition game? Well, yeah, I think you had uh, mentioned it beautifully there. You know, their, uh, their, their main thing on the power play is moving the pucks. And uh, one of those players that moves the puck really well on that power play is defenseman uh, Leach there. He is a, he, I've known, we've mentioned him a few times on the power play, how he, has his elite edges, but also the way he's able to move the puck, you know, how he's so calm back there. You know, he's not worried about, he's not worried about inter intercepting that puck. He's not worrying about throwing it to a dangerous area. He's always making the right play. So I think uh, with a guy like that on your uh, power play, it's, it's only going to help because he's quarterback in that blue line. So on that power play, you know, it's, it's, it's really good to have players like that, that can uh, move the puck well. And just this whole unit as a, as a whole, they're going to continue to, uh, do what they uh, did on the weekend, and you know they're just gonna really make the really make it hard for Brandon to clear the puck out. No doubt about it. Uh, in terms of Keegan Leach being a very positive uh, thing for the Buffaloes this year, just everything you mentioned about his edges, his ability to to move that puck. Uh, also, you know, generate some offense, generate some shots on that. Of course, he had a big goal in that game against uh, Prairie Hockey Academy this past weekend. But besides a guy like Keegan Leach, uh, you know, we've talked about the the pieces they got up front. They also got. Uh, some strong pieces besides Leach on the back end. Of course, the goaltending's there as well. But what's going to be the, the biggest part? I mean, the player that you're going to be looking for the most in terms of a player to watch in that exhibition game for the Buffaloes. Yeah, you know, there's all these uh, great, really good players. And, uh, you know, uh, we, we, we've mentioned a few, I think, last week on the, on the show. I mentioned Sam Takahashi as the player I thought was going to be the was going to be the player to watch. But uh, this week, I definitely think it's going to be Carlos De Leon. You know, just all year, I've noticed how well he is in any situation. They Buffalo decide to put him out, whether it's on the penalty kill or the power play. This guy just has it uh, locked down. You know, he's a good two-way player. So I think his two-way game is going to translate really well against this Brandon Wee Kings team. Yeah, for sure. And uh, Carlos De Leon this past weekend when we did watch him, Seth, a guy that can, you know, not only get it done in both ends of the ice, but also get a lot of pucks on net, which could bold very well for the Buffaloes in that game against Brandon. But talking about this Brandon Wee Kings U17 AAA team now. Uh, coming into this game, you know, what you've seen on paper from just the, the stats that they put up this season, uh, what should we expect from Brandon in this exhibition game against the Buffaloes? 
Oh yeah, they got a lot of guys like to shoot the puck. So we're gonna, I we got to expect a high tempo game from them. You know, a speed game. They're gonna be putting a lot of pucks on whichever goaltenders and net for pilot mounds. So, you know, you you got to uh, you got to expect. Yeah, yeah, like I said, that speed game. You know, they're gonna take a lot of shots. They're gonna hem you in the zone a little bit. So for pilot mound, you just gotta you know take a breather and uh, you know just make sure you're able to get pucks out and against this really fast team because they will make you pay if you're not paying attention. Let's uh, talk about them in the offensive zone. You've already talked about, you know, their speed. uh, But what are the other things that you'll be looking for, uh, you know, the things you'll be expecting from Brandon once they uh, get into the offensive zone, how they'll create their chances in this game? Yeah, I think they're going to really – I think their number one thing is going to be cycling the puck. Once they get to the offensive zone, they're going to – really uh, make you pay if they're if you get hemmed in then uh there's gonna be a lot of passing back and forth and i'm expecting some elite passing going on from this branded team with all the weapons they have up front they're really going to be looking for that open man whether it's he's in front of the net or on the on the wall or even on the point you know they got players everywhere so i'm really expecting you know once they get to the zone it's going to be their passing and it's going to be the way they move the puck Talking about uh, the defensive zone now, because obviously good offense comes from good defense. From what you've seen, uh, what what are you expecting out of this uh, Brandon Weekings team when they're in the defensive zone, trying to get the puck out and, you know, try to uh, fend off this uh, Buffalo's forecheck, like we've mentioned, has been very strong as of late. Yeah, you know, if there's a lot of these teams don't really have a – a guy that's re- that really leans hard one way or the other. They're all pretty good two-way players. They're able to, you know, get pucks out when it's in their own zone. They're able to even in- generate some shots on the back end in the offensive zone. So I'm just expecting a very reliable two-way game from this back end. You know, obviously they'll get their chances on the power play. You've talked about what you think Pilot Mount is going to need to do when they're on the penalty kill. But what about Brandon when they get their opportunity on the power play? What you expect from this uh, man advantage that they're going to show out there when they do get those opportunities? Yeah, you know, I'm expecting they're gonna they're gonna you know whip out one of uh, one of their their strong suits. Like you said, the power play is one of their you know uh, good areas of their game. So. You're, they're probably going to have a guy, one of their bigger guys in front, and they're going to be throwing, slinging a lot of shots in the offensive or uh, on that power play. So, you know, it's just, it's going to, you're going to see, it's going to be a whole team effort, I think, on the power play. You know, they got a lot of weapons, like we said. So I think, you know, you went, if you're pilot mound, you really got to be on and you really got to be on your game and uh, focusing in on all their players because uh, you got to cover up your lanes because if you don't, this team is going to make you pay. Yeah, no doubt about it. And Seth, uh, I know that you like teams that put a lot of shots on net. Let's see if this Weekings team is going to be able to do this in that uh, exhibition game. That's going to be already uh, happen once this uh, segment comes out on this Thursday edition, this Thursday night edition of Coffee with Graham. But uh, going over to the other side of things, of course, Brandon, most likely uh, the Weekings will be on the penalty kill at times in this game. What do you expect from this Weekings penalty kill when they are a man or two? down on the penalty kill against the Buffaloes. Yeah, you know, often when you have a really fast team, you're going to see a fast penalty kill. And by a fast penalty kill, I mean we're going to see a really aggressive penalty kill. There's gonna, they're going to have their two forwards up high on the, on, the sh- on the back end, and they're going to be able to block some shots. So I think this penalty kill is going to be a very aggressive one, as, uh, as I said, because due to the speed and, uh, you know, their active sticks. So I think, yeah, yeah you know, it's, it's going to be very aggressive, and they're going to – they're going to be clearing pucks. They're going to be, that's their main goal is going to be getting to that puck first on the penalty kill and just wasting as much time off the clock as possible and uh, then drilling it down. And, you know, it's just going to be a very reliable PK, in my, or I believe. Now we've talked about the offense. We've talked about the defensive zone. We've talked about the special teams for the Wee Kings, but what about their goaltending? Uh, what do you expect from the Wee Kings goaltending this game on Thursday against the Buffaloes? Yeah, you know, I looked at their uh, their goaltending stats, and their their goaltenders are all really, really well. So I'm expecting like uh, if Pile Mountain's gonna win this game, it's they gotta keep the uh, they gotta keep uh, this this uh, Brandon Weekings team off the board because their goaltenders are gonna be saving a lot of pucks. And uh, you know, if you're if you're Pile Mountain, it's gonna be really tough. But you gotta you gotta really just generate as much opportunity as you can because these goaltenders are really good and they're going to make you pay whoever's in that it doesn't it's a full team effort when it comes to the goaltending here 
Now, before we go to commercial break, uh, a player that you're looking to keep your eye on, or rather maybe a group of players from this uh, Wheat Kings team come, uh, you know, when this exhibition game happens between the Wheat Kings and the Buffaloes. Uh, yeah, for the Brandon Wheat Kings, I'm just going to go with uh, their top point getter, Will Wiseman. You know, this guy is uh, able to put the puck in the back. He has seven goals and six assists and uh, for 13 points in 12 games, and he's able to put the puck in the back of the net and dish it out. So, you know, this guy's going to be one of those players that's going to be leading the offense. He's going to be, uh, yeah, like I said, yeah, leading the offense, and he's going to be in the zone generating shots, you know, good passes. And uh, this guy is definitely going to be one of the players to watch this game. Well, going to be exciting to see if uh, Wiseman is going to come out and do his thing against the Buffaloes in this exhibition game. Of course, you guys, uh, I, I guess it's already happened by the time this has come out, but, uh, you know, hopefully you guys enjoyed the game once uh, it's happened. Hopefully you guys tuned into it. And, yeah, going to gonna be a fun one. Even though I won't be there, uh, Seth Rock and Cody Wall will be on the call for that game. So uh, got to be excited about that, right, Seth? Uh, we're going to go to our first commercial break in this edition of Seth's Inside scoop on coffee with graham coming up we're going to uh turn to another buffaloes team the u15 team and talking about their upcoming weekend against the prairie hockey academy here on seth's inside scoop on coffee with graham stick around for more after this commercial break Welcome back to Seth's Inside Scoop on Coffee with Graham. Uh, in the first part of Seth's Inside Scoop this week, we talked about the uh, matchup that was already played today, that exhibition game between the Palomon Hockey Academy U-17 male prep Buffaloes and the Brandon Weekings U-17 AAA team. Uh, Seth breaking down both teams here early on in the show. Uh, we're going to now move into another team from Palomon, Seth, the U-15 uh, male prep Buffaloes taking on Prairie Hockey Academy uh, it's going to be Saturday and Sunday. Those games will be happening Saturday. We'll see uh, these two teams play in the CSSHL game of the month on the network. But the last time these two teams played is pretty recently. Last weekend, uh, the Buffaloes getting the win on Friday and a 3-2 to two shootout win and then losing in a uh, blowout game 11-3 to three against uh, Prairie Hockey Academy uh, in Saturday's game. But looking at it, uh, the Buffaloes coming into this game uh, looking to, to bounce back against this Prairie Hockey Academy team. What do you think the biggest part of their game is going to be in terms of them being able to bounce back and get the win against Prairie Hockey Academy, not only on Saturday, but on Sunday as well? Yeah, the main thing their team that they're going to need to do to be successful is it's going to need to be a full team effort. I think that's the key for Pilot Mound in this one. Obviously, like you said, they uh, – they suffered a bit of a blowout in that last game they faced Prairie Hockey Academy. So I think the whole team is going to be ha, was are is going to had to have worked hard in those practices since then. And uh, I think the whole team is going to need to come out aggressive and just all be on the same page in order to get the in order to get the W in these next two games this weekend. Of course, uh, from what I saw, Seth, I'm pretty sure you saw it too, but Bo Murray, team captain, was not in action in those games against Prairie Hockey Academy. When you're down uh, a player like that, a player that's so significant like Bo Murray, their team captain, their leader, and uh, honestly, I'm going to say it right now, he's been their best forward all season long when he has been in games. Uh, guys like Liam Chartrand, uh, Liam Tatuni as well, as uh, a guy like uh, the other guys that they got are going to have to step up in this game, I'd have to feel this weekend, Seth, in these two games. Yeah, definitely. Uh, like I had said before, it's got to be a full team uh, full team effort. But when you're missing a guy like Bo Murray, who I agree with you, has probably been their best player uh, so far this season when he's been in the lineup. it's It's been tough, but, uh, you know, they just got to focus on, their, on the positives that they have seen this year, you know. All the wins they've gotten, they've gotten because they've played as a team. And I think, you know, team play is really, really going to be something they, they got to focus on coming up this weekend. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, you know, looking at the, the back end side of things for this team, two guys that have really stood out to us when we've watched them is uh, 
two guys that have played on, on the same pairing, guys like uh, Carson Carrolls and Gage Sutherland, you know, with them going up against the Prairie Hockey Academy team, who we know can put that puck in the back of the net, who's going to drive the offense at uh, times in games. Uh, how huge are the play from both uh, Carson and Gage going to be this weekend against Prairie Hockey Academy back there? Oh, it's going to be massive. Both these guys are able to generate a lot of offense, and both these guys can also play really responsible hockey in their own end. So, and we know this team leans on those two guys to, you know, play in pressure situations like whether it's offense or defense. So, uh, these two guys, oh, like always, are going to be the uh, one of the most reliable players on their team, and they're going to look to them to really lead the way this game or these two games. Yeah, it's funny you say uh, lead the way because these guys also do wear letters for this team. Uh, two A's, uh, one for Gage and one for Carson, of course. Uh, but, you know, looking at it, you know, this team on the special teams, when they get their opportunity, what are you looking for uh, the Buffaloes, this U15 squad, to do against Prairie Hockey Academy when they're up a man or two on the power play? They really got to try to suffocate uh, this uh, Prairie Hockey Academy. You know, I noticed a few times uh, with this power play, they sometimes like to pass the puck a little too much on the power play. And that's a good thing. Definitely passing the puck on a power play is a really good thing. But when you're passing it too much and you're, you know, time's killing off and you haven't gotten a shot, you know, it can sort, sort of hurt your team's momentum a little bit. But uh, what I think they got to do is just make sure they're generating some more shots on their power play. It doesn't matter where it's from, I think. As long as you get those uh, weird shots, you know, bounce them off the pad, get some rebounds, or even just uh, slinging it top corner, trying to go for those beauty goals uh, top shelf. Uh, you know, no no matter what it is, you got to get shots on that on the power play, and I think they really got to do that to be successful. Yeah, no doubt about it. You know, passing the puck around is nice, like he said, really trying to open up the lanes. But if you're doing all this passing and not getting the shots as a result of it, kind of a waste like you've uh, alluded to. But, you know, them on the penalty kill, uh, obviously Prairie Hockey Academy coming in, they, they've proven that they can put up offense, right, against this Buffaloes team. Of course, that 11-3 to game, uh, definitely an indicator of that, that Prairie Hockey Academy uh, their U15s won this past Saturday, but uh, what are you expecting from this Buffalo's penalty kill when they do get down a man or two against Prairie Hockey Academy's uh, man advantage when uh, Pilot Mound is on the penalty kill? You know, I think they just got to, you know, take a breather before the PK starts. You know, this team was able to, uh, or Prairie was able to put on put up quite a few goals in that game. So I think, you know, in order for them to, to have a successful penalty kill is to, you know, just, just breathe. Remember what the coaches tell you. Remember, uh, remember the system that you guys do, and just, just take it, take it easy. You know, obviously when the play is going, you can't really be taking it easy because the puck's going to be moving fast. But uh, just remember what the coaches said. Play it, play it like you have cover, cover up as many angles as you can. You know, try, try to block passes, try to block shots when they do come. Uh, this is a very offensive team, so we know they're going to be taking a lot of shots. So. Just make sure you're not screening your own goalie too, because that can uh, that can lead to some unfortunate goals on your own end. So as long as that play reliable in their own zone on the penalty kill, I think they got a chance. And it's no secret that this Buffalo's team, well, this Buffalo's program in general, has given up a lot of shots against us here. But for this segment, uh, for this part of the segment, you know, the U15s, uh, in terms of their goaltenders, whether it being uh, Keen Reader, Pete Moreau, and Nett, what you're going to expect from these goaltenders, knowing that they most likely most likely will be facing a lot of shots, a lot of uh, pucks they'll see this weekend against Prairie Hockey Academy. Yeah, definitely, you know, uh, Sometimes when you look at their stats, it doesn't quite show how good they actually are. I've said this a few times about this uh, U15 team. I, uh, we all have uh, mentioned this, how, how well we think their goaltenders are. It's just unfortunate. You know, there's been a few goal, few games where they've lost by quite a bit. So I think the goaltending is going to be as important as always. They always can make a lot of saves. So these goaltenders are very reliable. It's just got to... You know, you know, they, they can't get down on themselves. We, we've talked about, you know, whatever team, normally we, whatever league we're covering, you got to stay resilient when you're a goaltender if you if you let in a lot of goals and just keep your mind on the game. And as long as they can stay resilient, I think they got a good chance because these two goalies are really good. Yeah, no doubt about it. And resiliency has been a theme for this U15 team this season. They could get blown out one game and come back strong the next game. And, uh, you know, almost and, uh, you know, you know, most 
sometimes uh, get get wins out of their result of coming back and giving a strong effort. But uh, looking at, you know, the, the player that you're looking to watch, would you say it's on the goaltending side of things, or would you say there's a, another player that you're kind of keeping your eye on for this team this upcoming weekend against Prairie Hall at the Academy? You know, there's a guy that you've mentioned quite a bit. There's a guy that you've called quite a bit when we're uh, when we're broadcasting those games, and I got to go with him. I'm going to say Liam Tatuni. You know, this guy, like uh, Carlos De Leon on the U17 team, he's a guy that can play in all situations. We've seen him be able to kill penalties. We've seen him be able to put the puck in the back of the net. So I think, you know, if if when if Bo Murray isn't in the lineup, I don't I don't know if he is or not, but. Uh, if he isn't, then uh, this is one of the guys you got to look to to put up some offense and really lead by example in the way he plays. Yeah, for sure. And a guy that has not only gotten top six minutes so far this season, but has had a chance to, to play on the top line. Uh, and when Bo Murray was healthy in the lineup, he had a chance to play on a line with not only Bo Murray, but uh, Liam Chartrand as well. Definitely a guy that uh, the Buffalo is going to be relying on heavily to, to get some offense going for them and, and to play in uh, all situations and get it done for them this weekend against Prairie Hockey Academy. And speaking of Prairie, let's dive into them now. This is a team coming in that that's only played four games on the year in the CSSHL regular season. Uh, they lost their opening game to Notre Dame 7 to nothing. beat them in the second game 3-2. to two. Of course, last weekend against the Buffaloes, uh, losing a 3-2 to two shootout game and then uh, winning in a big one, 11-3 at Perry Hockey Academy. Looking at it, not much uh, playing time in the CSSHL regular season, but we know what this team uh, can do out there, as we've seen on the stat sheet. What you're expecting out of Prairie Hockey Academy coming out against Pilot Mound this upcoming weekend in these two games? I'm expecting a high octane offensive game for them. You know, this team can really, really burn you if you're not uh, if you're not ready for it because they got some fast guys. They got guys that can shoot. They got guys that can pass really well. Guys that will block shots. You know, guys that will do everything, whether it's in the offensive zone or in the defensive zone, and their goaltending is really good as well. This is a team by, by committee. They, they play by committee. It's the whole it's the whole team that really, really uh, can burn you in what, no matter what situation you're in. So especially offensively, though, this team can really put up points. So you really you really got to be watching for them uh, to score some early. And as, as for Pile Mound, they just got to, they got to, you know, play play their game, you know, because te- if they don't, they're, this team will burn them. You bring up an interesting point, uh, a team that can score by committee. When you're a coach like uh, Cal Nixon for the Buffaloes, you know, going up against a team like this that you got some familiarity against, right? You've played them twice already. But for Prairie Hockey Academy, you know, how, how tough it is going to be for these teams, not only the Buffaloes, but other teams, uh, you know, to, to prepare for a team, knowing that they not only have one or two guys that can burn you, but a bunch of guys in the lineup. Yeah, it's it's really hard as a coach to prepare for that, you know, especially if you like, yeah, this this team we we all know what they can do. So, you just you just got to go into it. You got to go into the game with a positive mindset. Don't go into the game worrying about what the score has got to be because uh what what what's got to be on your mind is the play ahead of you. How you, what are you going to do to shut these players down? And I think, you know, if you can figure out how to do that, then uh like uh you got a you got a good chance at uh be, being having it be a close game, but it's, it's really tough with a team like Prairie because they got all these weapons. Yeah, and Prairie Hockey Academy, let's dive more into their offense. You're expecting a high-octane team out there on the offensive side of things. You know, breaking down, you know, what you expect that high-octane offense to, to produce out there in terms of their chances, in terms of their offense this weekend. Yeah, I, I think it's no secret. I'm going to expect a lot of shots uh, coming from them in this game. Uh you know, they got some guys that can really put the puck in the back of the net, as we're probably we're going to talk about soon here. So, you know, I'm just, you you know, I, uh, I think they're bound. They're going to definitely score at least one or two goals this game. I think we both are expecting that. But, uh, yeah, you know, I just, it's going to be pretty impressive. We haven't covered them yet, but I'm very excited because uh, this team on paper looks really, really good offensively. Let's uh, talk about the defensive side of things now. Of course, like I've said before, good offense can come from good defense. Uh, you know, the, the defense that we should be expecting to see how they're going to look in their defensive zone transition and all that other stuff from Prairie this weekend. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I keep mentioning the offense, but, uh, you know, you got to mention the defense because, like you said, you, you, 
often good good offense comes from the defenders. So uh, from from good defense. So uh, yeah, you know this this team is a team that can really punish you offensively. But the defensemen on the team, like you you, you got to keep your head up because they're going to be able to put you on your put you on your rear end if you're not paying attention. So uh, yeah, they got some big guys on their on their back end, but they also you know they play a really reliable game defensively. So don't you don't take anything for granted because these guys will shut you down. What you'll be expecting now from uh, the special teams, starting with the, the power play carry this weekend. Yeah, with the power play, you know, uh, like we said, they got an elite offensive team, so so they're probably going to be itching to put the puck in the back of the net. Uh, they're going to be moving the puck around really well. They're going to be getting a lot of shots, and it's just going to be a typical, you know, elite power play we're going to see out there. And of course, now into the uh, penalty kill side of things for this Prairie team. Uh, are you expecting it to be uh, similar to the other team we talked about mo- uh, recently in this broadcast, Brandon, where, you know, this is going to be an aggressive penalty kill that's going to come out for Prairie Hockey Academy? Yeah, definitely. I uh, It might even be more aggressive because, uh, like I said, they got a lot. They got a really fast team, and they're going to be itching to, to get pucks out of the zone, and they're going to, even when they clear the puck, those defenders on the power play better watch out because uh, – they're going to be hard on the puck no matter where it is, and they're going to be hard on the back check no matter where it is on the PK. So this team is going to be really reliable, and they're also going to be really aggressive. So you got to watch out if you're piling on. Now going over to the goaltenders, uh, besides that seven to nothing loss in the opening game of their regular season against Notre Dame, this team hasn't allowed more than three goals in a game, uh, and that win against Notre Dame, of course. Uh, only given up two goals uh you know it could just be from the, the way this defense plays but looking at the goaltenders Seth uh you know what you'll be expecting out of the strength that they'll be showing this weekend yeah you know uh, statistically these goaltenders look pretty good and I think you know while we're watching they're gonna be they're gonna be even better these two goalies are goalies are confident they got a very strong team in front of them and then when the puck comes down to them they are no they don't shy away from making some great saves so Expect some great, great goaltending from this uh, per, or from this uh, yeah, Prairie Hockey Academy. Now let's uh, dive into the notable players from this team. One notable player that I picked, I only picked one because uh, there's a lot of guys that have put up similar numbers, but a guy that stood out to me from the stat sheet, Seth, is uh, number 14 there, leading point getter uh, and leading goal getter, as well as tied for assists uh, on the team for that lead in uh, Noah Thal. Uh, number 14, putting up 12 points in four games so far, which is ridiculous. Uh, seven goals, five assists. Uh, would you say that he is the most notable player coming in, or would you be leaning towards another guy this weekend? Uh, no, that's that's the guy I was, uh, that I was looking at. Yeah. There's really no question. I think as soon as I uh, saw, saw when I was doing some research for this, as soon as I saw this team stats, I knew immediately this is a guy I really want to watch play. He, he from the stats, you know, he has seven goals in four games. That's uh, that that speaks volumes for itself. And then uh, to add on to that, he has five assists. So this guy is going to be very entertaining to watch in this game coming up. Yeah, for sure. I, I'm excited to sit back and watch Seth while I call this game with you and Cody uh, this weekend coming up against uh, the Prairie Hockey Academy uh, U15 squad going up against the U15 male prep Buffaloes. We'll be back after another commercial break, Seth, to move on to the uh, female side of things. Uh, Swift Current Wildcats talk, uh, Pemina Valley Hawks talk, as well as some other teams here coming up on Seth's Inside Scoop on Coffee with Graham. Stick around for more after the break. Welcome to Pilot Mountain Hockey Academy, your world-class academic and hockey training facility created to maximize each student's athletic and academic potential. Blackjack Stewart Arena, home of the Buffalo, is inside the 46,000 square foot complex, as well as a curling rink and other facilities. The students have a unique combination of successful, well-rounded education at Pilot Mountain Collegiate Institute and the professional hockey training in an encouraging community. The years of experience of on-ice coaching propel our students to the next level, both mentally and physically, in a professional environment.
Welcome back to Seth's Inside Scoop here on Cop U with Graham. The, in this week's edition of Seth's Inside Scoop, we've been talking about uh, four teams so far, Palomon Hockey Academy's two teams, uh, the U-17 male prep Buffaloes, as well as the U-15 male prep Buffaloes, as well as uh, the Brandon Weekings U-17 AAA team and the uh, Prairie Hockey Academy U-15 male prep team and the team that we talked about the most recent here on uh, Seth's segment, Seth's Inside Scoop. Now we're going to uh, move away from the male side of things and talk about the female side of things. The Swift Current Wildcats playing three times here on the network, uh, all games being at home, of course. Uh, by the time this segment airs, a uh, game that we're going to be talking about uh, against Swift Current and uh, the Regina Rebels uh, is going to already uh, have happened. We're already going to get a result in that game by the time this airs. But let's talk about it. Swift Current coming into this game against the Rebels. Uh, Swift Current tied for second in the league with a 3-2-2 two and two record. Uh, the last two that I mentioned there being OT wins, 28 goals for, 18 goals against. And uh, Seth, uh, Swift Current having very good success against the Rebels this year. In fact, they're the only team that's been able to beat them so far this season uh looking at it you know what swift current is going to have to do uh fully loaded after getting two players back from the uh, u18 uh women's the western regional women's u18 championships that were played in portugal prairie having a loaded lineup ready to go out and try to beat this regina rebels team once again yeah, you know, this this uh, this team was able to come out with the win and beat the, one of the better teams in the league. So I think they, you know, they're going to carry a lot of confidence going into this game against the Regina Rebels and even against and against the Sharks as well. So I think uh, I think they're going to really, really be looking to get these two wins. And, uh, you know, we're, we're you got to expect they're going to carry that confidence over and uh, bring it here and apply it to these games coming up. And, of course, you never want to take a team lightly, but if the Swift current team is able to beat the Regina Rebels once again, they play a team that is uh, way below them in the standings twice coming up on the weekend against the Battleford Sharks. You know, how how confident you'd have to think that the Swift current team will be if they're able to pull off a win against the Regina Rebels heading into their weekend of two games at home against the Battleford Sharks on the weekend. Yeah, if they can beat them for a second time, their their uh, confidence is definitely going to skyrocket. But uh, you know, like you've said just before, and uh, we've all said in the past, never take a team lightly because then they'll burn you. And we 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 you know you've seen that in the past with uh, whatever team in any sort of league in any sport. You know, you can't take any team lightly, or else it's just not going to go well for you. So I think if if they are able to beat the Rebels, they cannot take the Sharks lightly or light lightly, or else they uh, might fail. Yeah, no doubt about it. And you have to think uh, just the way the Swift current coaching staff is and how they preach to their players, you know, what they uh, tell them to do out there. You, you have to think that they'll be having this uh, Wildcats team ready to go for all three games coming up for them, uh, not only against the Rebels, but against uh, Battlefords this upcoming weekend. But looking at it, a team that's getting back a player in Ava Metzger who's had an experience of uh, practicing, uh, playing some scrimmages against uh, Team Canada Canada's national team how huge it's going to be to have not only her back but senior goaltender in Aurora Van Warmer this week and then the in these three games coming up I think all the confidence they had before was going to be elevated because of these two players returns you know these are two players that they look to for uh leadership and put up uh and to put up some numbers if you're uh if you're the forward there so uh yeah you know it, it, when getting these two players back for this team is only going to help and uh like I said, their confidence is going to be rolling into this weekend. Of course, coming into uh, this game uh, that has been played, that is getting played tonight, that's going to be ending up, uh, you know, already being played as of the time this segment has aired. Um, you know, playing against Regina twice already, a uh, 4-3 to three OT win in the first game of the year and a 3-2 to two, uh, double OT win last week against them. You know, it seems like Swift, knows this uh, Regina Rebels team, uh, you know, they match up against them pretty well. What you'll be expecting against them, uh, to do, for them to do against Regina, how they'll execute their game plan once again to potentially get another one against them here in the season. Yeah, they got to have all systems going. They got to be 100% in every category because uh, we saw both those two games ended in overtime, even double overtime in the second one. So, you know, the, we know these teams are really close and it could it could have gone the other way for the Rebels. So I think... Uh, 
for the Wildcats here. Just try to emulate how you played in those other two games and try to advance on that. Try to play as, be- as best as you can, you know, making sure you are put- putting pucks to the perfect areas, you know, getting shots on that and playing responsible in your own end. And, uh, and the goaltenders will come up big too. So I think if it's a full team effort, you know, they can replicate the success they've seen against this Rebels team already. Of course, uh, Swift Current, we know that they got a lot of depth up front, a lot of depth throughout their lineup that can put up offense. Uh, 26 goals for it kind of speaks to that. But in terms of this team and the defensive side of things, what you think that Swift Current is going to need to do in the defensive end to, to have success in these three games coming up for them? Yeah, they really got to shut down these Rebels players because we know that these this Rebels team has lost twice in overtime and to this uh, Swift Current team. So they're really, really going to be pushing for the – they're really going to be pushing for the win, so the so the defense has got to be reliable. They they've got to have their they got to have the, you know their good defensive zone coverage. They got to be blocking shots. They got to be doing everything out there if they want to be able to have success again against this Regina team. You know, coming in against Battlefords on the weekends, of course, you have to think that Swift is going to be well prepared to, to face off against this Battlefords team. You know, playing a team like this, uh, Swift Current, you know, having a lot of success against them so far this season, two to nothing in their first matchup and then five to one in their second matchup, although be it, it was earlier in the season compared to now. Uh, what do you expect against uh, for this Swift Current team going against the Battlefords? for Sharks this upcoming weekend. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to expect, uh, well, I'm expecting Swift to probably outshoot the Sharks, but that doesn't mean they're going to get the win. You know, obviously they had success in the, in, uh, in the past against the Sharks team. So, you know, you're going to, you're going to expect they're going to want to, em- well, obviously they're going to want to emulate what, they're, what they did against this team before. So expect a lot of shots, you know, reliable defensive play and uh, good goaltending. It's just going to be a whole team effort like we saw in their other games against this team. Yeah, for sure. And uh, speaking about goaltending, Aurora Van Warmer is one and two on the season, but a strong point for them in goal has been the play of uh, Kaylee or Carly Leonard. Uh, 4-0 this season, undefeated so far. I would have to think she's going to get some playing time in at least uh, one of these three games. Maybe she'll get the vast majority of the starts. But uh, what you're expecting out of this uh, rookie goaltender if she's able to, you know, continue having the success that she's had so far this season in these games that she she will play in? You know, Graham, I'm expecting she's going to have even more success. I'm, I look at the, her numbers on here, and I've seen she's played fantastic already, you know. This it's 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 uh great it's great for this team to have a new goalie come in and play unbelievable and she has and she's even threatening uh she's even threatening Aurora Van Warmer's spot so I think you know there's a little bit of a friendly competition going into this uh going into this weekend with these two goaltenders but you know they obviously got a lot of uh a lot of confidence in their two in their two net minders so I think you know whoever's in that it's going to be great for this team. Yeah, and uh, always nice to know that a uh, coaching staff is able to have confidence in not only uh, a vet like Aurora Van Warmer, but a, a rookie goaltender as well. And Carly Leonard are going to be interesting to see uh, how they split the time uh, this this weekend coming up. Uh, this, I guess, in these three games, uh, we'll, we'll put it like that. But, uh, you know, one more thing about Swift, a uh, player that year you're, you're expecting to shine in, in these three games or maybe, uh, you know, yeah, yeah, a player that you're expecting to really stand out in these three games. I'm gonna go with the player we just mentioned. I'm gonna go with Carly. Uh, I'm gonna go with Carly Laner out here. Uh, she's uh, had a very, very good start to this season. She's won all four of the starts that she's been in. So I'm expecting her to continue her success that she's seen earlier in the year. Moving into the Regina Rebels now, uh, they come in as the number one team in the league into uh, this game uh, that's going to be played tonight. This game that's going to be happening uh, yesterday on Wednesday against Swift Current. Uh, Regina coming in as the number team in the league uh, with by a six point margin. They got 34 goals for most in the league, 13 goals against. They're getting two of their top forwards back and Ali Gerard and Alexis Pletford who played in the Western uh, Regional Women's U18 Championships in Porters La Prairie, Manitoba, just to have these two players back, two players that they were missing in that last game they played against Swift. It uh, ha- has to be huge to have these two players back. So. Oh, definitely. And uh, coming into this game against uh, Swift, they're going to they're really gonna be looking for this win. I'm, I'm expecting 
you know, this team, they're going to have all the confidence and they're going to be very, very, very excited to have those players back. And they're really going to be pushing for the win here against, uh, against Swift. What you think, uh, you know, Rajana is going to have to do this time around to, to get, get over the hump and beat the Swift team, a team that has been a team that has given them some troubles this season. Well, uh, yeah, like you said earlier, they, they've, they've come very close, you know, two very close games against this team. And I think, you know, it, it's just a game of balances. So you never know. Uh, I think this is going to be another very, very close knit battle. You know, we might see another overtime. We you know, might not. But I think uh, this game is going to be very close. And I'm just uh, very excited to see the result. Now, this team has put up 34 goals for most in the league. Uh, a lot of uh, success in the defensive zone. Uh, only 13 goals against, which is third least in the league. But talking about the team's offense, of course, we know Ali Girard can play as well as Alexis Platford. I mean, these are two players that lead the league top two in points. Uh, they also got another player, I'm forgetting the name off the top of my head, that is third in the league. In points this year but overall how this offense is going to look coming up in this game against Swift yeah you know they're gonna they're gonna look very good they're gonna look hungry like we said they haven't got they've been struggling a little bit against this uh against the Swift team so I think they're gonna be very hungry these like these two top goal scorers in uh in general I think they're gonna be very hungry to get on the board you know you know uh plat platform with uh seven goals and nine assists you know that's, that's very impressive so just, just expect these two players to really come up pushing and uh, pushing to score some goals in this uh, game. Yeah, and the uh, the player that I was forgetting the name of, uh, number twelve, Megan Hayers, to uh, not too bad for herself either. In eight games, uh, six goals, six assists for twelve points uh, for third on that team. But looking at it, uh, the defensive zone play, what you expect from the defensive side of things, because this is a team that hasn't really let up many goals against this season so far. Yeah, I'm, I'm expecting it to be even better than how it's been all year so far because, uh, like we said, they, they've uh, lost against this team. So uh, they're really going to be playing reliable. They're really not going to be given uh, Swift any any opportunities. They're going to be doing their best defensively, and I think it's going to be a really, really reliably sound, reliable, defensively sound game for this, uh, for this Regina Rebels team. Now – Going over to their goaltenders, uh, Chloe Sorensen and Peyton Schlamp, both with three wins on the season. Chloe Sorensen is uh, undefeated so far. Both of these goalies have shutouts. Uh, you got to think, no matter which goaltender goes in net, I had coach Mike Merck is going to be very pleased with the result, no matter who he puts out there in the pipes in this game against Swift. Yeah, I mean, they definitely. They've, they've both they've shown that they can play starting role, and they've both played very well. So, yeah, no matter who's in net, you're going to expect a lot of saves. You're going to expect, uh, you know, not too many goals against, and it's going to be a very tight battle between these two teams because of the goaltending. We'll uh, go with one more question about Regina, and then we'll move on to the Battle for the Sharks and then take a commercial break after that. But for the Regina Rebels, uh, a player that you're expecting to really stand out in this game that's going to be played tonight against the Swift Current Wildcats. Yeah, I'm going to go with uh, Alexis Petford. And uh, I said uh, I got her stats wrong. She actually has nine goals and ten assists. So my apologies about that. But, yeah, it's definitely got to be her, you know, she she can dish the puck and she can shoot the puck and uh, we're gonna see a lot of that in this game and I think uh, they they're gonna rely on her to do to uh, to put up the offense and to really really uh, yeah get the offense going for their team. Yeah, for sure. And uh, she's been, uh, you know, the, the number one point getter in the league so far this season, uh, looking to continue it, especially after coming off of playing against the best U18s, uh, female U18 hockey players at that Western Regional Women's U18 Championships that was uh, played in um, Portage La Prairie, Manitoba, the, the province where we're from here, Seth, which was pretty cool to, to see those players get an opportunity to do that. But uh, the Battleford Sharks coming in uh, second last place in the league. They only got one win so far this season. They got six losses in regulation and one overtime loss. This team uh, coming into the weekend against uh, Swift Current, not sure if they're playing before, but currently on the Five game losing streak. Not a lot of offense generated by them so far this year. A lot of goals against. Uh, what do you think that Balfour's is going to look to do to turn things around a bit, kind of turn the page and start anew here 
coming up this week and against a team like Swift Current. You know, I like you said, they haven't put up as much uh, goals as they would have liked. But uh, so, so to me, I think they're going to come in and they're going to take a very defensive approach. Now, obviously, though, they have they have quite a few goals against, but I think you know. If they can, if they can uh, execute their game well and they can play a nice defensive sound game, I think they really do have a chance, you know. And uh, if if they can get a win here, if they can put up a few goals in this game and make it close, if they can make this game close, I think it's going to bring a lot of confidence and might benefit their team in the future. Yeah, for sure, and uh, definitely they've shown that they can keep it close in that first matchup of the season, uh, only losing two to nothing. But of course, uh, a lot has changed since then. Uh, Swift, uh, you know, they you got to think they've gotten better with more time around each other, uh, just getting more familiar with each other. And you know what? Maybe that's the same for Battlefords. Uh, but looking at it, if there are going to be players to step up, who do you expect to step up for this team on the offensive side of things for Battlefords this summer? Uh... Yeah, you know, I'm, I've got to go with one of their leading point getters in Ava Cole. You know, she she's a she's a good player and she can put up some points. You know, obviously they've struggled a little bit, but she does have four points in eight games. So, and uh, I I do think they're going to be looking uh, looking to her to put some offense up as well as uh, as well as uh, uh, Malaya per per uh, Prylau. I think. Sorry, is is that is that right? Not not too sure. Let Let's check here. Um. You're talking about uh, number two? Yep. Michaela. Uh, Michaela. Uh, Pi 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 yeah. Pi Pi Pi. Pi. Yeah. We'll just yeah. go like that. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm expecting her, uh, her as well. You know, they're going to put up some, uh, they're going to definitely try to really, really work on trying to put up some points for this team. You know, you don't know, don't ever count them out. You know, they, they've struggled, but you can't ever count a team out like this. And, you know, they're really, really going to be coming into this weekend, really looking for a win. Now, we've talked about how, you know, what you're looking for this team to do to, you know, turn the page a bit in their season. But coming up against a, a team like Swift Current, a, a team that, you know, can put that puck in the net, a, a team that, you know, has shown that they have very good goaltending as well. You know, what Battleford's one area of the game that they they might be looking to, to you know what, take advantage of the Swift Current Wildcats team upcoming this weekend? You know, I think they they uh, got a chance of taking advantage. I think I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna take it to the goaltending. Actually, you know, uh, these these goaltenders both have you know they have faced a lot of shots, and uh, I think they're really gonna look to their goaltender to uh, to step up in this game and really uh, try to slow the game down for their team. Yeah, and looking at it, Emma Backman, just looking at it now, she's, of course, only got – she's got the only win for the team on the season, four losses, uh, but, you know, uh, goals against average, an overrated stat at times, but 1.95 uh, goals against average, but the save percentage really stands out, Seth, at uh, .943. Would you say that, uh, you know, looking at it, number 31, Emma Backman, is probably going to be the, the player that you're looking to stand out and really going to be the player to watch for this team upcoming this weekend? Yeah, definitely. Uh, that's exactly right. She is my player to watch for this team. You know, she has put up some excellent numbers for a team that's really struggled. And uh, I'm sure, you know, all the, uh, all the girls on our team are really, really happy with how she's been able to play. And, uh, you know, you got to think, you know, she, she might not have a letter on her jersey, but she's going to lead by example by the save she makes. Yeah, for sure. And uh, it seems like we've spent a lot of time together, Seth, which we have. And it seems like I can kind of read your mind who your player to watch is going to be here. Uh, let's see if I can get it right. And these uh, next few teams coming up here on this edition of Seth's Inside Scoop, we talk some Sask female hockey. But coming up, we're going to go back to uh, Manitoba, the MFHL, a big matchup coming up uh, for the Pemina Valley Hawks against the team that's tied for first place in the MFHL and the Yellowhead Chiefs. Coming up, we're going to break down, well, Seth is going to break down both of those teams on his segment, Seth's Inside Scoop, on this edition of Coffee with Graham. Stick around after the commercial break for more of Seth's Inside Scoop coming up here on the network. 